Holyfield's performance against Cooper, well, it was a dreary performance against Cooper. But what was great is that he had uh, the manliness to get up and off uh, the ropes and come back and put together some stiff, great hard combinations, great uppercuts and hooks. Oh, what a right hand by Holyfield! And now it's Cooper who is standing stock still. Oh, what a sensational right cross Holyfield landed to start this rally. Well, for a moment there, it appeared that uh, Bert Cooper might be the new heavyweight champion, but Holyfield recovered very quickly. By the time he had the standing eight count, he was, I thought he won the rest of the round. So we, we know he does have good recuperative powers. Holyfield rips another uppercut and Cooper standing stuck still. This could be it now. Only 15 seconds to go on the round. Not much time for Evander. Cooper staying right there. Target practice, but he's not gonna get it. I don't think he's gonna get it. Bill's Lane has seen enough. Holmes is here, not as a novelty like Foreman was a year ago, but he fought his way into this fight. And the intriguing thing is, you know, the old man has done it once. Uh, he's beat one of the, the so-called young lions. And, you know, can he take that next step? I want to quote the man I regard as the greatest teacher and trainer of all time, Cus D'Amato. Cus had always said that when any great fighter is in the twilight of his career, he can get it together on one evening and look marvelous. I believe Holmes will look great against Holyfield. I think that'll be his evening. And I therefore, I think he'll win. I think it'll be a very competitive fight, but I think that he, if he does as I expect, I think he'll decisively beat Holyfield. My prediction is that the woman that holds the card with the round number on it will be not bad. My prediction? Pain. A lot of people wrote right off Larry Holmes. I, I, I have no, no question of imagination because he's a great champion. And as I'm saying now, Larry still can win the fight. It's a, it's a toss-up. It can go anyway. I don't skip all the field ahead because he'll be more active in the fight and he'll work more in the fight. And if he really wants the fight, he should win. But it will be a tough fight for him. Probably only field in the decision. I think uh, Larry will be able to keep him at bay with the jab. So I think it's going to go the distance. Should be fun. We can say what we want about Buster Douglas. Douglas didn't come prepared to fight, that's true. But what I liked about what Holyfield did was he took advantage of the big mistake that Douglas made. And more important than that, that was the first time we'd seen Holyfield show his good movement. Holyfield Douglas. That was, I think that was probably Evander's best performance. I mean, he looked really focused for that fight. Larry Holmes, you know, has been very active and he has fought some fairly worthy opponents on the way back. And I think that uh, the left jab, the style is a big difference in all fights. And I think that in this particular fight, the style of Larry Holmes is gonna be the type of style that's gonna give uh, Evander a lot of problems. Holmes is gonna, I think Holmes is gonna beat uh, Holyfield. I think you have a good chance. He's a, he's a, he's a legit heavyweight. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's a legit heavyweight. He got the weight, he got the height, he got the reach. You know, he got the experience. Holyfield, you know, he, he, he just barely got over me. You know what I'm saying? By a hair, you know? But uh, I don't know, I hope him the best, too. I wish him the best. I think the thing that's intriguing about this fight is the fact of an older fighter and a younger fighter and whether the older fighter can come back and still teach the young fighter some new tricks. And I think Larry Holmes can just pull it off. He is a teacher. He's a good teacher. And in my grammar school years, when we had a good teacher to show our appreciation, we would bring our apple. And, uh, and, uh, and with this apple, I, I do want to give to the, to the best teacher. <laughs> it's your right to cheer for a van of Holyfield and root for him and pray for him. But it is, when the bell rings, it's my right to knock his head off. It's going to be a great fight, and you're going to really see history made. You're going to see a 42-year-old man regain his championship uh, when people thought that that was impossible. And I look forward to this fight, and I look forward uh, to the vindication, in effect, of Larry Holmes.
say I'm old and I'm gray and I hate my day, but they haven't seen nothing yet. I'm the Eastern assassin, and I'm back. I think there's a tendency to believe out there that, that Holyfield, anytime Holyfield steps in the ring, an upset can happen, and I think that's probably the case right now. Even at 42, Larry Holmes has a hell of a shot on June 19th. That's because, A, I don't think Evander Holyfield hits hard enough to take him out. B, you can't miss Evander Holyfield. Because of A and B, C, Larry Holmes believes he's going to win. That kind of confidence that Holmes has usually means he's, he's going to be in the fight. To make a prediction flat out who's going to win, I, I really can't. I think it's that close. That's going to be a tough fight. I like both of the guys, but um, I would have, you know, I would, I would have to go, if I had anybody to choose, I would say, may the best man win. I can only tell you, give you the strong points on both fighters. I think Larry Holmes' strong point is his ability to box. His ability to use their left hand, to work off their left hand. Holyfield, his strong points, he had power in both hands, left hook and right hand. But his strong points is to get inside. If uh, Evander comes in with a clear mind and uh, a good attitude, I think he would win. Because when, when he puts his mind to something, he goes in there and establishes what he has to do and gets it over with. John Heyman, who do you like in the big fight? I'll tell you, Joe Bolster, I wish there wasn't going to be a fight. I can't believe, in this day and age, two grown men can't settle their differences amicably without resorting to violence. It is a shame, I think, it was Nostradamus who predicted that the end of the world would begin in a parking lot at Caesar's Palace. I picked a Holyfield knockout within five rounds. Holyfield's a younger guy, he's stronger. And he's a smart, he's a smart technician. Well, it's always dramatic when you have an old champ like Larry Holmes and a proud guy who, you know, does not want to quit and will fight, you know, to the last ounce of whatever strength he has uh, trying to regain his title. And you know that Larry's been burning ever since uh, the Sphinx fight. I think he thinks that Evander Holyfield is just another Michael Sphinx. Uh, so that makes it dramatic because it's almost his way of redeeming or maybe rewriting history. What I will tell you is this, that I really feel it's going to be a lot more exciting fight than people may think as Holmes proved against Mercer. And I think the confidence level is going to be 50% higher for Holmes. To his right. Say he wants him in yeah. there. He said, come on, come on. And he's nailing Mercer with right hands and uppercuts. And Mercer just stands in there and takes them. There's no way Larry Holmes will be as accurate against uh, Holyfield as he was against Mercer because you're talking about two different opponents opposite him. Mercer did not move. He was a stationary target from the waist up. Evander's very elusive, head side to side, bobbing and weaving constantly. Very hard for George Foreman to hit. Could be very hard for Larry Holmes to hit. Larry Holmes' strength, uh, strengths are his heart and his, and his will. Uh, he's never been a quitter, and he'll be in there giving you know 100 percent of what he has. Uh, his jab is uh, one of the best. Evander Holyfield's strengths is that. He technically, from an offensive standpoint, he might be the best in boxing today. He throws more punches and throws more punches well than anybody in boxing. He has an excellent jab, a very good hook, a good straight right hand, one of the best uppercuts in boxing, and he will go to the body. From an offensive standpoint, there is almost nothing to criticize in Evander Holyfield. That is his strength. The fighters of this era don't know how to fight because they have no experience in a ring. And that's the difference. And that's why a man like Larry Holmes can get into the ring today and fight a younger fighter because he knows more than that fighter will ever know. I'm the best at this time. And on June the 19th, if you want to see what's going to happen to Larry Holmes, be there and get TVKO. TVKO. Holyfield landing inside. He is championship boxing. Month after month. Riddick Bowe. Round knockout. Pound for pound. Oh. And round by round. Lennox Lewis. Weaver down. If you're looking for a fight. James Dooney wins the title. We deliver it. 
Live on pay-per-view, TVKO, pay-per-view boxing's undisputed champion. Evander is the best. He'll go in as the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. And that night, Evander Holyfield will come out as the undefeated, undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Holyfield. You're going to see a hell of a fight June 19th. See it on television, TVKO. It'll be June 1992 when we fight. It won't be June 78. Uh, he's in the wrong year. And he's in the wrong era. He's messing with the wrong man. And, uh, and usually when you bite off more than you can chew, you usually get choked. Now Holyfield coming on. Strong left from Holyfield against Foreman. And a right. And Holyfield landing inside. What punch after another. He's got Foreman wobbling. I thought it was a brilliant tactical fight by Vander against George Foreman. His movement, his getting in and out, picking his shots, unloading in the seventh round with 20 consecutive blows. Uh, it was a spectacular performance. Holyfield home, oh, it's probably the most outstanding boxing match in the history of the sport because you're pitting the past against the present. And anything can happen when two boxers get into the ring. And very seldom you meet one that's still got the endurance and quickness from the past as home. It's going to be the most exciting fight. I'm going to buy 12 boxes of popcorn, 17 hot dogs. Oh, I'm going to have uh, uh, cotton candy. It's going to be a treat. Very the Holyfield. Great champion. Look at that physique. Strong. But where is he making a mistake? Look where his hand's at. <laughs> he cannot fight me with his hands like that. This is me. And if you didn't notice. Great mercy. As you see extended there, that is called the home camera. That will go all night long. This man, I presume, takes a better shot than you. So if I hit you with that, then good night, Irene. <laughs> June 19th, season five. Be there. And the new heavyweight champion of the world. I thought it was a great performance. I mean, he. He, uh, he was so loose in the ring. That was the main thing that impressed me. I mean, he was talking to the camera guy during the fight. Um, he, he, he just was having fun in there. Holmes is talking to our camera. I'm not Tommy Morrison. He says, I'm not Tommy Morrison. <laughs> and, he, and he was working, too. I mean, he landed like 70% of his punches. I don't care if you're fighting your mother. To land 70% of your punches is, is very impressive. I wasn't certain that Larry could beat Morrison. I thought that he would, that he could. I wasn't certain of it, but let me tell you, as I stand here today, I am absolutely certain, without any kind of doubt, that the next heavyweight champion of the world will be Larry Holmes. Good right hand, and Bay is down. If I make it's a very interesting matchup, a heck of a fight. I don't think Holyfield's going to get past Larry's left hand, and I think Larry's going to per se, win recognition, win the title, and then we're going to have a lot of fun later on. I think it's a fight that certainly causes a lot of controversy, and like I say, people love comebacks, and I think Larry Holmes gained a lot of fans when he came back and surprised everybody against uh, against Mercer. So it's going to it's going to be an exciting thing for me, it's going to be an exciting thing for you, and it's going to be exciting for anybody that's associated with the sport of boxing. Well, the intrigue about the fight is that Larry Holmes made us at least semi-believers by his performance against Ray Mercer. And the other intriguing aspect is that we know Evander Holyfield, while he's a very good boxer, and I think vastly underrated, is not a huge puncher. That's what gives Larry Holmes, I think, a shot in this fight, because we know this much. He's a, he's a skillful man in the ring, and he's very crafty. I think that Larry Holmes will be deafened by the ticking of his body clock, and that amid the noise, Evander Holyfield will score an eighth or ninth round technical knockout. I think in advantage you've got one of the top athletes in the world, very, very well conditioned, he just does everything so well. And in Larry Holmes, I think you're talking about one of the greatest heavyweight champions of all time. 
who just does, does so many things uh, well and to the point of being great. The left jab that he has may be the greatest jab in the history of the heavyweight division. So I think he's going to go back to the gym in between now and fight time. Going to hone whatever skills he has and take those skills into the ring against Evander, and that's why it's going to be a great fight. TVKO. Championship boxing. Month after month. Riddick Boss, round knockout. Pound for pound. Oh! And round by round. Lennox Lewis weavers now. If you're looking for a fight, James Dooley wins the title. We deliver it. Live on pay per view. TVKO, pay per view boxing's undisputed champion. The intrigue is the fact that he has another. 40-plus guy coming along uh, fighting for the heavyweight championship. And uh, a lot of people giving him a chance also to win. Well, the fact that Holmes really brought himself up to the peak that he did, it was a tough fight against Ben Mercer. He went the entire 12 rounds and deserved the decision. I think that's what the public is interested in seeing if Holmes can do it again. He's done it for six. Oh, the right oh. then the uppercut from Holmes. But after seeing the Holmes Mercer fight, I have to think that maybe Holmes could pull out one more big win like that. Um, my common sense tells me it's going to be Holyfield, but my heart tells me Larry Holmes got one more big win. At this point, the Larry Holmes that we see, his strengths are that he still has the good jab and that he is very clever and that he is now filled with confidence. Holmes is talking to our camera. I'm not he says, I'm not Tommy Morrison. <laughs> He's carrying on his own commentary. What he did in the Mercer fight, standing there and looking at the camera and playing to the camera while he's in a corner with Ray Mercer trying to hit him, shows me that the bravado and the confidence that Larry Holmes always had is back and back in a big way. People love to see uh, uh, a former champion come back and uh, win the title. Uh, Holmes had a lot of fun in the ring that night with uh, with Ray Mercer, and they want to see if he can if he can indeed do that to uh, Evander Holyfield. Evander has the power to knock out almost anybody on an accumulated punch basis. 99% of knockouts are the product of accumulated punishment rather than one great punch, and that's the way Evander finishes people if he's going to do so. He also knocks people out, as was, I think, the case against Cooper, largely by demonstrating to them that his will is too great for him to lose. Now Holyfield rips another uppercut, and Cooper standing stuck still. This could be it now. Only 15 seconds to go in the round. Not much time for Evander. Cooper staying right there. Target practice, but he's not going to get him. I don't think he's going to get him. Bills Lane has seen enough. Bills Lane stops the fight. Holyfield is a very fast fighter for a heavyweight. He's got very good hand speed. He's got a very good chin. The Bird Cooper fight doesn't disprove that. Uh, he took some pretty good shots from Foreman. He's taken good shots with his whole career. When he gets hit, he fights back. And Foreman on the attack in the seventh round. So watch him come back. Holyfield taking that little bit of a rest we talked about. And let's there see if he gathers himself and comes back. You can see he was poising himself to come back with a few hard shots, catching George with his hands down. Holyfield has done the time again against Michael Dokes and Alex Stewart. He'll take it, take it, take it, and all of a sudden he comes on. Right, and he's making George waste a lot of punches. Instead of clinching, he's blocking punches. He's letting George throw punches and miss them. A lot of bouncing off the gloves of Holyfield as he lands. And now Holyfield coming on. A strong left from Holyfield against Foreman. And a right. And Holyfield landing inside. One punch after another. He's got Foreman wobbling. Don't underrate this here fight. This is going to be a great fight. We're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to beat Larry Holmes. But we're going to have to win with the best effort that Evander can put out. It's going to be a great fight. And you're going to see Evander Holyfield still undefeated, still undisputed champion of the world. Larry Holmes has the exact tools necessary to defeat Evander Holyfield. And Evander Holyfield is a very, very good fighter, make no mistake about it. But he doesn't fight well backing up. And Larry has his best weapon is the left jab. So Evander's weakness plays to Larry's strength. And I look for Larry Holmes to knock out Evander Holyfield in the seventh round. Just hoping to weather the storm. And he's down again. Anytime the heavyweight championship's on the line, it's an event. I don't care who the two gentlemen are in the ring. It's been proven time and time again, when you least expect it, boxing can turn into the theater of the unexpected, which is what we saw on many occasions. 
And that may happen again June 19th. Vanner, as I would say, pack your lunch. It's going to be a long day for you. A long day, not at the office, but in the workforce. And I don't know if you ever experienced work before, but you will on June the 19th. So be there. And by the way, don't forget to bring your belts because you won't be going home with them. You'll be fired. And for all the viewers out there, you can tune this in on June the 19th on TVKO. It's going to be another knockout. Tune us in. Well, speaking of striking, the man promoting the latest bridging of boxing's generation gap shot the messengers on Tuesday, hoping to strike the fear of a managing editor into the media. Bob Arum banged the podium on a call for more hype. Charlie Steiner was there as Holmes and Holyfield posed in preparation. Heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield and 42-year-old challenger Larry Holmes posing for pictures following Tuesday morning's final press conference before Friday night's heavyweight championship. At the press conference, Holmes promoter Bob Arum expressed his frustration over the lack of attention and the lack of excitement leading up to this fight. And he assessed the blame at the doorstep of the media. I think, my God, this is a heavyweight championship of the world. This is the boxing equivalent of the Super Bowl or the World Series. Certainly that would not be the problem if Mike Tyson was involved in this promotion. But of course, Mike Tyson is out of sight. But for Evander Holyfield, he's certainly not out of mind. I would love to go up there and just talk to him and let him know that, you know, it's, that's from the friendship of my heart from the time I met him. And it's not about this heavyweight title and not about money. I want him to get out for money because it's not about that. And a lot of people try to portray it about money. It's never been about money with me fighting. I love the game of boxing. And, and we were boxing, I was still going to add it to, I want to win because I want to be my very best. But other than that, I respect him as a man and I hate to see a young man be put in jail and hoping that while he's there that he can come back and rebound from it. But of course, Mike Tyson is not a part of this promotion. 42-year-old Larry Holmes is. Holmes and Holyfield get it on on Friday night here at Caesars. And the weigh-in will be Wednesday night. You can catch it live on SportsCenter, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. We'll show it to you and try to keep you up to date with all that's going on right up until and through fight night. Evander Holyfield and Larry Holmes clash for the heavyweight championship. All this week, ESPN SportsCenter brings you daily updates, round-by-round -round fight analysis, and post-fight interviews all week on ESPN SportsCenter. Friday night here in the Nevada desert, Larry Holmes and Evander Holyfield will look to climb the mountain for the heavyweight championship of the world here at Caesars Palace. Hi, I'm Charlie Steiner, and on Wednesday afternoon here at Caesars, they had the anticipated weigh-in for Friday night's championship fight. It was Larry Holmes who tipped the scales first. 233 pounds is what Holmes weighed in at, which is exactly what he weighed for the Ray Mercer fight back in February when he won that unanimous decision setting up the heavyweight championship fight with Evander Holyfield. Then it was the champion's turn to get on the scale and the immaculately sculpted Holyfield weighed in at 210, which is exactly what he weighed in against Burt Cooper back on November the 23rd, 1991 in Atlanta. The tail of the tape reveals advantages or perhaps disadvantages for Larry Holmes every step of the way. He is 23 pounds heavier than the champion. He's certainly been in this business a whole lot longer. After all, he is 13 years older and he has a three and a half inch reach advantage. After the weigh-in, Al Bernstein had a chance to talk to both fighters, first speaking with the former champion, Larry Holmes. We are here with Larry Holmes, who weighed in at 233. Your uh, lowest weight during this comeback was 232. Does that mean even more movement from Larry Holmes in his spot? Oh, no. Walking right to him and do my thing, you know, make him make mistakes and counter with it. That's all. All right. So that, that weight it, you're happy with? Very happy. You know, uh, I'm strong. I'm older. And as the older you get, the more weight you got to put on. So it, it, it's no... Uh, trying to gain weight or trying to lose weight. Just let my weight fall wherever it falls at. Mentally, I'm together because the workout wasn't so long. It was like six or eight weeks, not 13 to 14 weeks. 
and my weight stayed up, and I haven't been ill this fight, and I feel good. Holmes and Holyfield, Friday night here in Las Vegas, and joining me now, ESPN boxing analyst Al Bernstein, 233 for Holmes, 210 for Holyfield. How will that manifest itself in the ring? Well, you know, Charlie, the, the thing that I think about this fight is that because of the weight, you know that Larry Holmes is not going to run around that ring too much, and he hasn't been doing that in recent fights. What we're going to see is him as a stationary target trying to land the counter right hand. That is why for Evander Holyfield, that middle, which is such a big target for Larry Holmes, especially in this fight, is going to have to be worked. Holyfield's going to have to go to the body and go to the body often against Holmes because that opens up the head. It has been unseasonably cool here this week in Las Vegas. Highs of only 85, about 20 degrees cooler than it normally is for this time of year. But it is going to heat up by Friday night. How will the heat manifest these two fighters? Well, the thing the heat's going to play a role in is the body work that Holyfield does. He's going to have to work the body for, of Holmes, which will slow him down. But in the process, Evander Holyfield's going to have to be careful not to throw so many punches, and he's always one of the most active heavyweights, that he doesn't wear himself out if Holmes doesn't go early, and then in the later rounds, Holmes could hit him with a counter right hand. Al and I will be back a little bit later here on this one-hour edition of SportsCenter, and when we come back, a look at the brief championship reign of Evander Holyfield. Now let's go back to SportsCenter. Mike Tyson's in prison, Don King's in trouble again, Sugar Ray Leonard is retired, and George Foreman is just about run out of gas. When boxing has lost its matinee idol, when some wonder if Evander Holyfield is more like the raw deal than the real deal, where does the sport turn? Is it possible that Larry Holmes, 42, four years removed from a knockout at the hands of Mike Tyson, is the best the sport can offer? Today, boxing's identity crisis with a man who's never at a loss for words, the author, scribe, philosopher, and close personal friend of Lou Duva, Burt Randolph Sugar of Boxing Illustrated talks to us on Fight Week up close. Now joining us up close, he always comes decked out in the, the most tasteful of, of attire. Check these pants out, folks. You gotta, look at this. How do you describe these pants? Did you say decked out or direct out? <laughs> Somebody, now you come from the pages of Esquire, is that right? I, no, they asked me to step out at their request. <laughs> My wife says it looks like the Goodwill box exploded on me. <laughs> Now, this is, this is really a surprise, because you're a man who picked Sugar Ray Leonard to beat Marvin Hagler. You're a man who, who courageously picked Larry Holmes to beat Muhammad Ali. I remember that one, too. But you are saying, go to this fight, enjoy this fight, this is going to be a good fight. I mean, where, where is this coming from? I believe this is a legitimate fight. Uh, everybody uh, is saying, well, gee, didn't we see this before? A 42-year-old man yeah. fighting... Evander Holyfield. They're playing our song, right. Uh, you must understand, Larry Holmes is the only man in boxing's top ten, and Boxing Illustrated's top ten, to beat another man in the top ten. Had but Ray Mercer turned the tables on him last February 7th and done to Holmes what Holmes did to Mercer, mm -hmm. we'd have no problem. Mm -hmm. Now, there are those who say, Burt Sugar here promoting TVKO, the, the telecast of which you can order Friday. On, paid, on viewer's paid, choice, how about is that? Is bought and paid for, bought and paid for by Larry Holmes. We have evidence. I'm going to embarrass you. We have some evidence. How did find, you get this? We've got some evidence. An actual check, ladies and gentlemen. I have to, I don't mean to embarrass you. I'm now going to show a, this is an actual Larry Holmes check to prove that he tried to buy and pay for Burt Sugar. It says, as you can read it carefully, made out to Burt Sugar, and it says, no, no, no money, no dollars. <laughs> No sense from Larry Holmes. But it, so they, he I'm tried to... I'm probably overpaid for it. <laughs> I did this because I believed in the fight. Right. I believe that boxing needs good heavyweight championship fights. It's sort of like, you know, the first uh, Saturday at uh, Louisville. Right. It's as exciting as a derby. Yeah. I think it's as an exciting fight. An awfully heavy thoroughbred, though. Look at the cover. This is his Boxing Illustrated cover. Look at Larry Holmes' belly in this picture. Can you, can you look at this? Now, this guy's not in any kind of shape for a fight. He won and this is your cover of your magazine. He won the Burt Sugar Lookalike Contest. What can I tell you? <laughs> He's going to come in at 2.30. He came in at 2.30 against Mercer. I don't think the belly is going to be the decisive factor. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, he outslicked Ray Mercer. He sent him to school. That's why this is called the Class of Champions. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, I don't know if you've ever seen a, uh, somebody try to hit a cat on the, on, the, on the fence in the backyard. Right. They go out with a, a rock in their hand and they pretend not to be watching the cat that's watching them. Mm -hmm. And they pretend not to have anything in their hand. That's what Holmes did to Mercer. He might be able to get away with a lot of that. 
against Evander Holyfield, who's sort of singular dimensional. Seriously, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a, you're a broadcaster, you're a journalist, you have the Boxing Illustrated. Should you be in any way, though, shilling or promoting even, that's your word, a fight? Isn't that it's sort of a conflict of interest, Bert? To a minor degree, I could make a case for it, but to a major degree, if it's good for boxing, and I think this fight is. You really do? It's good for my how, magazine. How can it be? It's good for your magazine if, if it's good for the sport. If you must it, understand But that. a 42-year-old, how could that be good for boxing? Well, we didn't have any problems when Archie Moore was 42 and he was fighting Rocky Marciano and, in fact, dropped him mm -hmm. in Marciano's last fight. Uh, we didn't have any problems with coming out of it, George Foreman fighting Evander Holyfield. We had a lot of problems, and I was one of the few to say, this is going to be a hell of a fight. Mm -hmm. I say the same thing. Somebody's going to listen to me once. <laughs> Hopefully it's Roy Firestone. Hopefully it's the people who will watch it on pay-per-view. Hopefully somebody will pay attention. You know what I hear? Bob Halloran at the Mirage tells me this fight won't draw flies. They're having a lot of trouble putting people on the live gate. And you wonder what that's going to mean nationally for the TVKO folks. Well, you must understand that Bob, who is a friend of both of ours, of course, he's also the winner of the Robert Redford Lookalike yes, Contest. And he even says that. Is, that is, it, I think, being at the Mirage and this fight being at Caesars. Yeah, they're competitive. It, 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 be, it, it sort of betokens him to say something of that ilk. Uh, you must understand, though, the live gate is distinguishable here from the pay-per-view attraction right because pay-per-view is one of those wonderful things where people order the day of the fight right. here they can even save money by ordering a day early you get it for free by the way for promoting the fight oh no oh, oh no i'm one of those i invite everybody to either come with me to the fight <laughs> or join me on the telecast because i think it's going to be a good fight let's talk about some other issues mike tyson the former heavyweight champ being interviewed by ed bradley you might have seen it uh, earlier this week uh, will he ever be back you think he's going to fight again someday, even if it's three, four years down the road? And will he ever be the same again? Uh, two different questions. Will he come back? I don't see what his options are. Once he gets out, and there's that question of where his money went, uh, he's going to have to fight. Mm -hmm. It's all he knows how to do. He's not going to be a nuclear physicist by three years at the Indiana Youth Center. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll fight again. Uh, number two, will he be the same? He already was showing vestiges of not being the same mm -hmm. in his last three fights. Razor Ruddock, Razor Ruddock, and uh, before that, the Stewart and uh, Hyphen Tillman fight. If he gets out of the can, you know for sure he's got the Gastineau fight locked up. He'll, he'll get to fight Gastineau for sure, right? Uh, Mark, <laughs> Mark Gastineau, that, which, which brings me back to a funny point. The man that d decimated... Gastineau, Doc Anderson. Look at this is Gastineau in his earlier years. He, he, he seems so physically, you know, improved back then. I wonder what it was. We can't figure what that must have he been. Should, he should have worn that in the ring against Doc Anderson. By the by, the same Doc Anderson who took him six rounds and, and, and knocked him on his keister is the same man that Larry Holmes started his comeback mm -hmm. tour That's against right. and knocked out Anderson in one round, mm -hmm. which, which just go, going back for one quick second allows me to believe that there were differences in Foreman's comeback where he fought 24 men, 23 of whom were not even household names in their own households. Right. And here comes Holmes, and he's taking a different road to the heavyweight championship fight. Six men, including Ray Mercer, is his last. All right. You think Terry Norris is the best fighter in the world right now? And if he is, is he the most compelling fighter in the world? No, I don't think Terry Norris is the best fighter. Uh, I think Julio Cesar Chavez and, Mel Still. and Pernell Whitaker won too, no matter how you do it. Norris's stock continues to raise, uh, be raised by writers, but I do think that he is not as colorful right. as the people he's trying to succeed, the Ray Leonards, the marvelous Marvin Haglers, the Roberto Durans. That, that brings up an interesting point. Should a fighter have to worry about capturing the public's imagination? I mean, if he does his job in the ring, if Andrew Holyfield, he wins, and he always wins, why should he be concerned about the knocks that he doesn't, he doesn't move us as the champion? Is that part of the, the package? You have to do that as a fighter? When you're in a single entity sport, a uh, boxer is one out of one, not one out of nine as in baseball, one out of 11 as in football. Assuredly, he's got to have some saleability, particularly when you're asking people, please join us either at ringside or on pay-per-view. If he is charismatic, or that old word that Clara Bow was described as having it, if he right. has it, right. uh, it helps the sale. 
uh, if he doesn't have it, and uh, there are those that say that Evander Holyfield looks like he just came off Mount Rushmore, right, and that his idea of a good time is wearing brown shoes with a tuxedo, right, it then does not make him a compelling watch, right. One word answer: <clears throat> Does Holyfield have it? No, no, and particularly compared to what Tyson had. Yeah. Okay. Ty Tyson had a perversity. Holyfield does not have anything. Boxing Illustrated's Burt Sugar also here promoting TVKO. We're going to come back and talk about his old friend, Don King. We'll do it after this. Up Close is brought to you by Smooth, the Bush Beer, and easy drinking Bush Light. The ageless veteran scribe. Bert Randolph Sugar joining us up close. Hello. What about you? Never liked that cigar. Maybe I'm very happy about that, by the way. Well, I notice there are no smoking signs all around, but there's not a sign that says no chewing. Right. And so you, uh, there you go chewing. I figure I can get away with something here. Yeah. Not a lot of good lines on the Roy Firestone <laughs> show. I might as well try something. All right. Let's sober it up just a little bit. Big piece on PBS and has been for the beginning of this year, and they just revisited it. The unauthorized biography of Don King. Jack Newfield was the narrator and the producer of this special. It's going to win all kinds of awards. Let's take a look at a clip from it. First of all, talking about the fact that it was an accidental homicide in King's case. I returned to King's old neighborhood with Bob Tani, a former Cleveland police officer. Tani was an eyewitness when King, a numbers racketeer, stomped a man to death in 1966. We were driving west on Cedar, and I saw a few hundred feet ahead, man lying on the sidewalk, man standing over him, kicking him in the head. We drove up there immediately, stopped the car, and I jumped out of the vehicle, and the man standing up had a revolver in his hand. So I pulled out my gun, I says, drop the gun. He took the gun, threw it on the back trunk of another vehicle that was parked there. I went over immediately and grabbed that gun, and as I did, this gentleman standing up just went over to a man lying down and gave him one vicious kick again right in the head. Police officers rushed to aid the victim. One of them took this photograph. Detective Tony is shown leaning over the man, Sam Garrett. Garrett weighed 100 pounds less than King, and he owed King $600. And he kept saying to me, Donald, I'll pay you, I'll pay you, I'll pay you. He repeated it a couple times. And after that, he just lapsed in unconsciousness. Now, that is history, that is record, but it, for the first time, I think, certainly on television, we learned that it was not an accidental, or as King has said for all so many years, a mistake where he bumped his head against the sidewalk, that King in cold blood killed a man. Well, or in hot blood. It could be one of the two, but nonetheless, there is a homicide involved. Mm -hmm. For which he was convicted. And served time in the slammer. What did you think about this report, this, this, <coughs> this two-hour special on PBS? Well, Jack Newfield is a great investigative reporter and he got uh, most of the facts some of those had appeared in boxing illustrated before but what he had done was take them and run them even deeper mm -hmm. and uh, did a hell of a job it is there in the proverbial black and white for all to see that if a man can kill a man for six hundred dollars what will he do in the name of the many millions that boxing has now we found out a little bit later what uh, Don King thought of Jack Newfield in the flesh head-to-head, head, face-to-face. I guess it's in the lobby of the Mirage. This is actually a scene from that unauthorized biography of Don King. But for a scumbag like you, Jack Newfield, that is prejudice. You don't have no right to do what you do. You're not fair, impartial, and objective. Do your thing. I was taken aback by the intensity of his rage yes. you, and by his attempt to intimidate me. Word. You ain't got nothing in you that spells true. Uh, You're the biggest prevaricator and lying right. SOB in ever was, man. You are nothing. Like you are nothing. Why is King so afraid of Jack Newfield? I don't know if he's afraid. I think he is irate that somebody is positioning him with facts rather than, as Don calls him, trickerations. Uh, Don uh, did something in there he oft times does. He did against Mike Katz of the New York Daily News. He will fall back on calling any person, a writer who is white, racist. bigoted, mm -hmm. or racist if they find out something on him. Uh, I don't know if he's afraid of Jack. But Don assuredly is afraid of Jack's report coming out. Yeah. Is King in trouble? Big trouble now? The kind of trouble where he may not be able to get away? Well, he's in trouble not 
from a legal standpoint because there has been a letter written, if you will, by Mike Tyson saying he empowered him to make the deductions he did, including $52,000 to his daughter Debbie to run the, the Mike, Mike Tyson, Tyson fan, fan club. club. I yes. just hope that Don never runs a fan club for me. <laughs> uh, but I think he's in trouble because his meal ticket, his cash cow's in, the, in jail. Mm -hmm. And going back to Evander Holyfield, the Holyfield and George Foreman fight last year was the first fight, first heavyweight championship fight since 1978 mm -hmm. that Don King was on the outside with his nose pressed against the glass. So mm. he's in trouble as a force in boxing. The questions raised regarding King and Tyson and the millions uh, raised in this uh, new issue of Boxing Illustrated, the cover exclusive Mike Tyson in prison and uh, Bert Sugar, of course, the editor of Boxing Illustrated. We'll come back more with Bert right after this. Music Express, voted number one by the National Limousine Association, has offices in Los Angeles and the East Coast. Music Express can handle your corporate needs anywhere in the U.S. and worldwide. With Bert Sugar, we're going to talk a little bit right now about the Olympic hopefuls for 1992, boxing hopefuls. Oscar de la Hoya keeps uh, coming back into our consciousness, 135 pounds, dedicating the gold medal, the quest for it, to his late mother. Good story, but uh, does he have the luster of some of the other champions past in Olympic history? Yes, the, the, the magic Olympic year was 76 out of Montreal, where you had five Olympians go pro, four of whom won championships. Sugar Ray Leonard, of course, Howard Davis, Michael and Leon Spinks, and Leo Randolph. There's an analogy here, the analogy being Oscar de la Hoya dedicating this to his mother. Right. Howard Davis dedicated that Olympic to his dad who died. Right. And at that point, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard had carried the picture of his bride to be in his, mm -hmm. in his shoe. Right. These are the things of which boxing are made and which we can follow. And if de la Hoya goes pro, and he's young enough, he won't stay 135, which mm -hmm. is lightweight. He can move into those middle area weight divisions. Now, isn't the very thing that we're promoting here, TVKO, pay-per-view, as, as good as it is for the key fighters, the big money fighters, does it hurt the Oscar de la Hoyas of the world? No, it doesn't hurt the name fighters. Uh, what TV needs is the exposure it gets on the Olympics and regular network TV to build these men into the Holy Fields and the Holmeses. Right. If those two things are in tandem, you have a good package for boxing. Right. One of the reasons I'm here inviting you, inviting the viewers to come ringside with me if they can't please watch it on pay-per-view is they may miss one of the good fights i think and i mm -hmm. need good fights to push boxing and yeah. if they have to order it let them call viewers choice they'll get it or what's, call me i'll be at ringside somewhere <laughs> what's the next big fight in boxing is, is it going to be a chavez fight whitaker or or maybe terry norris fighting chavez or well we've got the following possibilities existing now chavez hyphen camacho yeah which I think is a little late for Camacho. Yeah, it's a reach. Uh, we also have the possibility of Buddy McGirt fighting Terry Norris, but that's in negotiation and they're going like that. For the moment, what we have is the one I'm happiest and proudest of. And you, and you could see it Friday night, either it's uh, Caesars Live or... Or on Viewer's Choice and Viewers TBKO, Choice. and it's called Larry Holmes hyphen Evander Holyfield. That's right. The employee of Larry Holmes. No money. No, no, no. Bert Sugar. And I'm getting the same here tonight. <laughs> we'll come back. Lou Duva joins us from the Holyfield camp. We'll do it from Las Vegas after this. Travel range through Continental. One airline can make a difference. For the price of unrestricted coach, a first-class seat. That's the difference on Continental. Joining us now up close from Las Vegas, the trainer of Evander Holyfield, here's Lou Duva. Lou, welcome. Good to see you. Hey, good talking to you, Roy. I'm how's ready your, for you. Yeah, how's your health? Because last year at this time, of course, you had the open heart surgery. I think you dropped, what, about 15 pounds? Yes, I dropped about 15 pounds. I'm walking. I'm in good shape. I'm back in boxing. And, Roy, you better watch yourself because I'm coming after you. <laughs> talking about shape, you told me uh, a few moments ago when we were getting set up, that you can always tell what kind of shape your fighter is in by how little he says, right, before the fight? Absolutely. We go on a three-grunt program. You know, when it's no grunts at all, we're concerned about it because he's too happy, too complacent. Uh, but as soon as he starts going to one grunt a week or two grunts a week, but when he gets up to three grunts, that's walking down the aisle to the, to the ring the night of the fight, then I know he's ready. So you're saying he's ready right now? 
Right now, he's up to two and a half grunts. <laughs> okay. What does this fight prove, Lou, a 42-year-old opponent to, who some say washed up years ago? Well, you know, Roy, everybody can, they can pick on anything. They can pick on how tall he is, how fat he is. They can pick on a lot of things, you know. So they're going to pick on 42. This guy think, comes in with 22 years of experience. That's what I'm concerned about. I'm not concerned about the known. I'm concerned about the unknown, about his desire to, to know that here he's got a chance uh, to get respectability, which he never got as a champion, uh, to, to, uh, to come up with a pot of gold if he should defeat him and become the world champion. Those are the things that I'm concerned about. What did Holmes show you against Ray Mercer? He says he was a different fighter against Mercer, a better fighter, believe it or not, than years past. Do you buy that? No, I don't buy that. He had a dummy in front of him. Uh, number one, uh, Mercer, you know how bad it got. I mean, Larry Holmes is talking to him, and he's talking back to him, you know? I'd put a, I told the man already, put a fist right in his mouth as soon as he starts talking. Yeah. What about uh, this whole contention that your guy has really been ducking Riddick Bowe, and they'll take any fight they have to before they have to take on Riddick Bowe? That's an absolute lie. The fight that should have been right now was Riddick Bowe. That's the fight that was supposed to happen. Uh, that's a fight that Rock Newman pulled out on after he made a deal with my son. So that's a fallacy. Mm -hmm. The Tyson fight that never was, how much did your guy need Tyson to prove his worth as a fighter? He didn't need him. I think what they needed was each other. Mike Tyson also had to prove something. Who was the best fighter in the world? Mm -hmm. And I think they needed each other. And I think really the public is the one that was deprived of it. Let me tell you something, Roy. My guy would have fought him in a bar. If my guy would have fought him outside, he would have fought him for nothing. He wanted to fight Tyson. You think he'll ever get the chance, your guy, against Tyson? We can only go on availability. We were supposed to fight uh, Mike Tyson three times, and three times something happened that uh, Mike Tyson was never available. I mean, if he's available while Evander is still fighting, we'd be glad to fight him. But who knows? Right now, he's looking at three to six. So who knows what's going to happen? Evander Holyfield is a quality guy. I've spent a lot of time with him. He's very charitable. He's everything, quote, a champion should be in the public eye, I think. But I still believe the public doesn't buy him. Uh, that's just my point of view. If there's any skepticism on the part of the public, Lou, where do you think it comes from in Evander Holyfield? Uh, that he's too nice a guy. I mean, uh, they, can't, they can't imagine that he would be um, a bad guy in a ring by that. I mean, really a fighter going out there and giving his all, giving his best. And then on the outside, he would do a complete reversal and be a good guy mm -hmm. and, and, and wanting to please the kids out there, wanting to make sure the sports got a good image and make sure that the kids out there are, are, are in the right, uh, right, right frame of mind as far as respecting boxing. Mm -hmm. If he was a better knockout artist too, if he was more dazzling, tur turning guys away early in a fight, think that would help? Well, Roy, maybe it might help as boxing. I don't think it could help him as a person. The guy is... A, the guy's the tops when it comes to a person. He's a good human being. You wouldn't want it any other way. Believe mm -hmm. me, you wouldn't want it any other way. And this charge of steroids on the part of Holmes, which we've talked about before, but we'll talk about it again. Uh, how damaging is that for kids who don't know uh, Evander Holyfield's uh, ethics and morality in terms of pre preparing for a sport? When, he, when Holmes even infers that Evander used steroids, how damaging is that? I think it's embarrassing, number one, to the sport. I think it's embarrassing to the kids out there. And um, it didn't affect uh, uh, Evander to the point where he got mad about it. He was just embarrassed about it for the kids. Because it's like he says, if one kid out there believes uh, what uh, Holmes says, it demoralizes his, uh, uh, you know, everything he, he respects about boxing, everything he respects about athletes, uh, this is what's wrong with it. Yeah. Lou Duva, best of luck Friday night. Evander Holyfield, Larry Holmes at Caesars Palace. Stay in shape. You look good, and I'm ready to tangle with you. I'll get ready to rumble with you anytime. <laughs> no, no, get, no. Let's first train for a year, both of us. <laughs> okay, thanks, Lou. Good we'll talking come, to you. We'll come back more Up Close right after this. Up Close has been brought to you by Red Lobster for the seafood lover in you. Kurt Sugar and Lou Duva for joining us up close. Tomorrow, Minute Bowl, far from the NBA, far from being the NBA wonder. He talks about poverty and famine in the Sudan. That's tomorrow, up close. Hope you join us then.
And up next, we'll send you to Las Vegas, where the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world is standing by, Evander Holyfield. We'll speak live with our Charlie Steiner. We'll also be hearing from the challenger. I'm an example for all these young people who grow up to follow me. I'm the greatest thing ever. I love me. I said Mike Marciano can carry my jockstrap. I say Charlie Steiner can carry my jockstrap. On June 19th, Larry Holmes is going to face a very serious crisis. He may take it very hard. He may have to seek professional help. Or it may be business as usual. Budweiser presents Evander Holyfield versus Larry Holmes, June 19th from Caesars Palace. Live on TVKO. Available only on pay-per-view. Call your local cable operator to order. See just how well Larry Holmes handles a serious crisis. Center is brought to you by Anheuser-Busch, who proudly brings you Family Talk. Let's stop underage drinking before it starts. And by Foot Locker, America's most complete athletic footwear store, where it all begins. At eight minutes after four o'clock Pacific time, it is 100 degrees this Thursday afternoon in Las Vegas. And about 24 hours from now, Evander Holyfield and Larry Holmes will step into the ring for the heavyweight championship of the world. For Larry Holmes, he is a five to one underdog. Larry Holmes in search of lost youth, in search of a one-time heavyweight championship that he held for seven and a half years and ever, it seems, in search of respect. you got the respect that you, in your own mind, deserved as heavyweight champion? Well, that's something that you got to earn, and I tried to earn it. Whether they give it to me or not, it really doesn't, didn't matter as long as they didn't confront me with a lot of Reddick uh, name-calling and junk like that into my, in my face, because I earn respect, and by earning respect, I give respect. And anytime somebody gives me a million dollars, I feel that that's respect enough. So when the critics, when the news media like yourself come out and say, he didn't get the respect he deserved. Well, I damn sure did, because if you look at my bank account and see that I got the respect. Now, a lot of people might say that Larry Holmes, that's all he want is money, but try to live without it. Rocky couldn't carry my jock strap. Right. And I, I appreciate if Jerry Lister and anybody else, they try to run a computer fight to put the truth in the machine and not some fantasy thing because people want a white hope. There will never be a white champion as long as black fighters fighting the way they are. Looking back on Rocky Marciano and your post-fight statement, do you look back at that now and kind of cringe and say, damn, I wish I didn't say all that? I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything that people wanted to, didn't want to take out of contact. I don't care what people say about me. I'm a great fighter. I, I'm a great individual. I'm a good human being. I love my family. And I respect other people and their families. But when it comes down to someone is trying to tear me down, to put me down like I never exist, like everything I'd done didn't mean anything, I get mad. And when I said Marciano couldn't carry my jockstrap, that was a slang. They took it and they ran with it, way out of proportion. You said it in your day, probably to someone, and didn't mean anything. Somebody else said things to somebody else that don't mean anything. People take it out of the wrong contact. Is your place in history important to you? My record speaks for itself, Charlie. You know, how many people in this world that owns the own federal courthouse building that got their own prison cells in the building that's paid off? How many people, how many black people can say that? I'm an example. 
for all these young people who grow up to follow me. I'm an example when I said I'm not going to do certain things that some people make you do. You know, you got to, you know, you got to stand up for something. And I stand up. I stand up for me. I stand up for my family. I stand up for rightness and for young people. If you can do something like that, then you accomplish a lot. That's all. And, and there ain't nobody in this world wouldn't say or they can't say that I didn't stand up. I stand up to boxing organizations. I stand up to managers and promoters. I stand up to ESPN, ABC, CBS, TVKO, or HBO, or any other network. If they, if some, they do something that is not right or I don't like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to sacrifice myself to make Charlie Steiner happy if I don't feel that that's the right thing to do. But if I can do something that will make Charlie Steiner happy, and I feel good about doing it, I'll be glad to do it. Well, you made me happy sitting down talking? I know I did. Don't you ever forget it. A contentious challenger, Larry Holmes. Joining us now, a congenial heavyweight champion of the world, Vander Holyfield. Of course, you know Al Bernstein. Vander, about 25, 26 hours from now, you'll be stepping into the ring against uh, 42-year-old Larry Holmes. Is this another one of those no-win situations you always seem to find yourself in? Not exactly. It's always um, a winning situation for me to go out and do my best. For his credibility, it might be, but um, for it's me going out and giving my best, it's always a challenge. Evander, uh, as far as the style of fighting this fight, Ray Mercer uh, didn't fight a very bright fight against Larry Holmes. And one of the things he didn't do was go to the body. Larry Holmes has given you an ample target to go after. Can we expect to see a lot of that from you? Well, uh, one of my plans, are is to go to the body and try to make him drop his hand and hit him to the arms a lot and try to take away the left jab. Mm -hmm. Are you worried about being hit with the, uh, the counter right as he backs into the ropes? And would, do you have to be more aggressive to make sure that doesn't happen? Well, um, I'm looking to try to counter him uh, most of all. is get him to swing punches and try to counter the, the big left hand or the right hand and try to catch him in the middle of the ring, most so on the ropes. Mm -hmm. Let me follow up something you said before about this no-win situation. Yeah, it's a challenge for you. How concerned are you about us, the critics, the media, and all of that in that no-win situation kind of thinking? Well, you know, I realize that you are going to always have your opinion, and I realize that whether I do good or bad, but most important thing for me is not to let the media dictate what type of fight I'm going to fight, meaning I'm putting pressure on myself, I'm feeling that I got to rush out there and try to get him out in the first round, in the early round, um, uh, take something from my, my, my boxing style for standing back and not boxing. Yeah. Evander, uh, you're always ready physically. I think people are always pretty much assured of that. Are you mentally focused on this? Is it possible to look past Holmes because he's 42 years old? Well, not at all. I, I think um, uh, for us looking past, I want to show you that you're not mentally together. And I um, thank God for me being able to focus on one thing, and that's Larry at home right now at this time. How important is it for you to win big? You know, you, you were tested, of course, by George. You got more than you wanted out of Burt Cooper. How important is it for you to take this guy out in a hurry? Well, Impressively. It really, it really is not important to take him out in a hurry or anything. It's important for me to uh, fight a good fight and fight a smart fight because see, Larry Hong got a lot of experience to the point where that he can keep himself from getting knocked out. But uh, the object of the game for me to get out here and make him fight because I know if he fight me back, then I'll be able to take him out. You've Vander Holyfield, the heavyweight champion of the world, who will be in the ring, oh, about 200 yards to our left here, a couple hours from uh, 24 hours from now. And a reminder, tomorrow night, as soon as the fight is over, we will have live and exclusive coverage of our post-fight extravaganza, round-by-round -round coverage, as the baseball game proceeds. And a very pleasant good evening to you. Welcome to Sports Center, along with Bill Patrick. I'm Bob Lee. Tonight, among the neon and the gold and the irrigated lushness of Las Vegas, sports will pause for that one event which revels in excess. That would be the heavyweight championship of the world. And in more ways than one, Vegas is heating up for this one. Charlie Steiner joins us live now. Charles? Bill, a triple-digit temperature day here in the Nevada desert, and we're about four hours plus until fight time. 
Welcome to Caesar's Palace, where as the temperature has gone up, so have the odds against Larry Holmes from five to one yesterday. He is now a six to one underdog. And one of the reasons you may have alluded to is the temperature. It is now triple digits out at ringside where Al Bernstein is standing by, Al. Thank you, Charlie. It is hot down there, 100 degrees at ringside. It'll be a little cooler a little later on. This should have an impact really on both fighters. Could have an impact on Holyfield because he throws so many punches, more than any heavyweight alive today but also to Larry Holmes because at 42 years of age, it's going to restrict the amount of movement he can use against Holyfield. Back to you, Charlie. That's one key, the fact that Larry Holmes is indeed 42 years old. How will that impact on referee Mills Lane tonight? Mills? No, sir, I'll let the fight unfold as it, as it develops. Larry Holmes is an old fox. He knows his way around. He's a good fighter. can punch a little bit. Got a great left hand. I think it's a hell of a fight. I mean, and, uh, and, and he's in there to fight for the world championship. I give him every chance. Mills Lane, 66 world championship fights, his 14th heavyweight championship. How's he going to impact on this fight tonight, Al? Well, Charlie, you know, Mills Lane is kind of a laissez-faire capitalist when it comes to refereeing. He kind of lets things happen on its own. Does not interject himself as much into the fight as some other referees. And I think what that will do is make this a more interesting contest. You know, it was 12 years ago in the ring in which uh, Al uh, Bernstein was standing in front. Muhammad Ali and Larry Holmes went at it. There's a lot of historical symmetry there, and coming up a bit later on Sports Center, we'll allude to that. We'll also have some fight predictions. For now, for Al Bernstein, Charlie Steiner, live at Caesars Palace, and let's go back to Sports Center. We get back to Las Vegas as the countdown to Holyfield Holmes continues, and one of the questions Charlie Steiner is about to examine is this. Tonight, will Larry Holmes go the way of Muhammad Ali? Charles? Bob, in about four hours at this little place here, Messrs. Holyfield and Holmes have a little date in the desert. In the same ring behind the same casino that Larry Holmes and Muhammad Ali went at it 12 years ago, October 2nd, 1980. At that time, Larry Holmes was a 30-year-old champion facing a fading and faded former champion, 38-year-old Muhammad Ali. Let's fast forward 12 years. 29-year-old Evander Holyfield at the peak of his skills, perhaps the peak of his career, facing, uh, facing a fading and former champion, Larry Holmes, in search of the title just one more time. Eleven and a half years later and some 20 pounds heavier, Larry Holmes enters the same ring on Friday night in which he effectively ended Muhammad Ali's career in the first ever parking lot event at Caesars Palace. And the last time we saw a vintage Ali, at least before the fight. And all of you who think Holmes is with me, I'm going to look with all of you. You all must fall in the miracle, because I'm the all When I mean no, no, no match. How right he was. Holmes administered a 10-round beating. Oh, he's, he's ready to go. This must be stopped. It is a sad way to end. Crowd screaming, chanting, Ali, Ali. Legends die hard. And Ali is learning that even he not be forever young. Ali was 38 years old that October night in 1980 in his attempt to recapture his youth and the heavyweight championship. And as Holmes steps into the same ring on Friday night in his attempt to regain the title, Larry Holmes is 42 years old. Holmes has had a condescending attitude toward Holyfield as he prepares for the Friday night fight, just as Ali had had toward him. No problem. Okay. He hasn't changed one bit since he was my hard hand in Pennsylvania. Still easy, he would left jail. Still slow, tries to imitate me, but he gets awful tired after about two good rounds. It's already laid out. The strip is written. All I got to do is follow it. And as long as I don't deviate from that, I'll be heavyweight champion of the world. As the Ali fight progressed, and it became apparent that Holmes was simply beating up his former boss and idol, Larry took pity on the aging Ali. You held back on punches, didn't you, that night? So as to not hurt him? That night. But if it was this night, I wouldn't do, do no holding back. I don't, I don't have any soft spot in my heart while I'm in the ring anymore. 
Holmes was 30 on the night he destroyed the 38-year-old Ali. Holyfield is 29. Holmes does not expect Holyfield to pull his punches the way he did in 1980, nor would he want it to. It's every man for himself. And if some, something happened to me, would Muhammad Ali feel sorry as I did? Would anyone feel sorry as I did? Now, I don't worry about anyone. Al Bernstein and I were in the desert here 12 years ago covering the Ali Holmes fight. What lessons were learned that night that we might be able to apply tonight? Well, I think the lesson that was learned by Muhammad Ali and might be learned by Larry Holmes again tonight is older athletes have the most trouble dealing with speed. We don't think of Evander Holyfield as being so fast in terms of foot speed or hand speed, but guess what? He is, and I think that may be the one thing that Larry Holmes is shocked at and the one thing as uh, viewers of this fight that we are amazed at all these rapid fire combinations that will probably do Holmes in. The odds have grown a little longer for Larry Holmes. Yesterday he was a 5 to 1 underdog. Today he is now a 6 to 1 underdog and that seems to be the sediment of a lot of the boxing experts around these parts. Holyfield's going to come out very aggressive. I think he's got to take the fight to Holmes. He's got to hit Holmes early and hard. And I think Larry's going to wither. He's going to get tired. And I think he's going to get stopped before seven rounds are over. Holyfield's not mobile. Uh, he's not a mobile type of fighter. He's not an in and out. He, he just can't go uh, but two ways, in and out. He's not this way laterally. I think Larry's going to poke on a guy, poke on a guy. I think you've got a 12-round fight in your hands. And if Larry wins, I won't be the most amazed guy in the world. In the fourth or the fifth round, Holyfield, who is a decent, accurate puncher, will be raining punches on Holmes. It'll be reminiscent of Holmes Ali. You'll see Holmes covering, covering up, not being able to retaliate, and the referee will stop the fight. Of course, Rock Newman has a vested interest. Neither one of us do. What do you think tonight? <laughs> well, the most shocking thing is I find myself agreeing with Rock Newman. <laughs> this has happened once, possibly in the last uh, three or four years. Uh, yeah, I think Evander Holyfield is going to win this bout, and it's because of being so active. It will end around the sixth or seventh round. The people that made the uh, over and under are pretty bright. The uh, well-timed cliche around these parts this week has been let youth be served, and lo, it shall be, and probably about seven.